Every play space in our home has been thoughtfully created with my children's developmental needs in mind. I have a three and a half year old and a five month old at home and I made some important updates to our playroom to ensure it's fun, accessible and safe for both of them. So in today's video, I'm excited to share the freshly updated playroom along with Alina's Montessori activities. And of course, I'll take you guys on the full tour of our play areas around the house. So let's get started. This is an overview of our playroom. On the left side, you'll find the Montessori shelf where we keep around 8 to 10 activities along with some open-ended toys. On the right side, there is a tent, an art and craft station and a piano. I do rotate Alina's activities at least once a month or two. It's time for a toy rotation when things start to get a little chaotic in the playroom. Alina doesn't spend too much time in there and when she does, the Montessori materials tend to be used in unexpected ways, leading to quite a mess. So when the room loses its odor, it's my cue to give it a thorough clean and surprise Alina with some fresh toys from our toy closet. Now I'm changing Alina's activities on the shelf, going from the easiest to the most challenging from the left to right. These activities are not just randomly chosen, I carefully selected them from our toy closet where we store Alina's toys when they are not in use. I picked these based on Alina's current interests. If you are curious about how we organize and store our toys in the toy closet, you can find the link to that video in the description box below, so be sure to check it out for a deeper dive into our toy storage system. Now I'll briefly go through what activities we have on the shelf. So the first one is language cards. These cards feature realistic images and Alina enjoys flipping through them to explore the details of the objects on the back of each card. The next activity is a puzzle and Alina is a big fan of puzzles at the moment, especially those featuring Bororo. It's her absolute favorite. And the next one is a matching game using Montessori math beads and cards. These beads are incredible for helping children learn abstract mathematical concepts in a hands-on way, allowing them to physically and visually interact with them. Alina has previously enjoyed a lot of basic number matching games and this one is a slightly different version, just a little twist on the familiar and this one is a set of wooden animal cards for memory game which Alina recently learned it from daycare and she really loves it. This one is a color matching activity using tongues and magnet tiles. The goal is to use the tongues to place the colored object onto the corresponding colored magnet tile. This happens to be the easiest activity for Alina so I'm meant to place it in the first cubby but this tray is larger than the others so it's better fit in this cubby. In the next cubby, we have another color matching game. It's a slice puzzle. It's a little bit more challenging for a three-year-old, but she seemed to enjoy this new challenge and it kept her engaged for quite some time. Moving to the bottom shelf, we have a make-do cardboard construction set. With this kit, you can construct a cardboard house, a cardboard bag, or even a cardboard animal. The possibilities are endless. Alina may be a bit young for building complex structures right now, but she's currently learning how to use the tools effectively. This activity helps her practice making holes, screwing, and connecting two pieces of cardboard. And this is the Montessori spindle box that I DIY'd. It's designed for children to place the correct number of wooden sticks in each compartment, which is labeled from 0 to 5. I recently made a video how to DIY Montessori math materials. I'll be sure to link it down in the description box for those who are interested. Moving on to the next cubbies, I have four beautiful baskets designated for our open-ended toys such as Lego, wooden blocks, magnet tiles and more. And I rotate activities inside the baskets as well. Personally, I found that having multiple labeled bins for toys isn't always practical, especially for young children who can't read yet. It often leads to toys being overlooked because you can't can't really see what's inside. That's why I love using these seagrass baskets. They're perfect for storing open-ended toys. You can see through what's inside, making it easy for your child to find what they are looking for and put toys back where they belong. They have handles so Alina can easily pull them out even when they're quite heavy. In the first basket, we've got bowls of different sizes and textures. In the next one, we keep magnet tiles. Alina's currently obsessed with using them to build houses. And in here, you will find various musical instruments. Finally, this basket contains some scarves. 
Alina was inspired to use them for wrapping things after seeing me wrap a gift with fabric. She often uses them for imaginative print and play and dress up. These toys right here, they are just too bulky to squeeze into our toy closet. Well, Alina's pretty much over them, but they are patiently waiting for Elijah to grow up and dive into some playtime. I've just moved this dollhouse into Alina's bedroom because of the small and loose pieces that could be a safety concern for our 5 month old. I believe Alina will enjoy waking up to her own dollhouse in her room every morning. And speaking of safety, we've said goodbye to this little Lego table for the same reason. It had too many small pieces that needed to keep out of reach, safety first. Alina used to prefer working on the floor with a mat, so I removed this IKEA flea set table from the playroom a while ago, but I think it's better to have it here as this table not only gives her the option to work there, but also creates a more conducive environment for focused activities, especially when she wants to avoid interruptions from her little brother. I guess it's a common challenge with younger child who tend to disrupt an older child's work. Figuring out the best play space setup when you have more than one child involves some trial and error. As Elijah becomes more mobile, we'll see how we go with this setup, which so far seems to be working just fine for us. At the moment, most of the toys on the shelf are just for Alina. As Elijah grows, we'll introduce more activities they can enjoy together. Elijah's Montessori shelf is currently in the living room area for easy supervision, but our plan is to eventually move it to the playroom so that they can play together. Alina used to spend a lot of time reading in this tent, but she's kind of outgrown it. Nevertheless, it remains a special place for her. Whenever she's feeling down, she sneaks in here to find comfort, and sometimes I catch her doing cheeky things like eating chocolate or trying on my lipstick in here. This is our art and craft station. It's time for some major upgrades because Alina's passion for drawing and painting has taken off. I'm excited to make this space even more accessible for her with loads of new art supplies all while ensuring it's out of reach for little Elijah. Check out this pegboard and accessories I got from IKEA. I haven't mounted it on the wall yet. My husband insisted that he will do the drilling. He kind of doesn't trust me with drilling anymore so I'm just patiently waiting for him to get on it on the weekend. These color paints are from Ikea. I love this one because you can actually draw and write with the tip of the bottle. They are labeled as non-washable but I found that a quick wipe with some wipes did the trick just fine. We've got a container filled with various sized paint brushes and a small palette. And in this section we have water soluble pencils that allow you to blend colors with some wet brush. And we've got some water based brush markers and I really love that pastel tone. We've also got scissors, scotch tape and washi tapes on hand along with some craft punches that let you create cute shapes from paper. And in here we have glitter glues which happen to be Alina's absolute favorites and we got some colored pencils in here. We also have a collection of stickers and check out this adorable drawing Alina did which I'm going to clip it up here. I'm just going to pull out some paper out of this IKEA paper roll and edit this glass jar for some water and that's how it's all set up. I love how accessible everything is here. Alina can spend hours playing with the paints, exploring different colors and immersing herself in drawing and painting. At the end of these creative sessions, I ask her to put everything back where it belongs. She empties the glass jar, washes the palette and dries it all. It might take her some time but I believe she enjoys the cleaning process just as much as the creative one. There were times when she just walked away after she painted so I simply reminded her to clean up once she's done with whatever she was doing and she did clean up all by herself. After a few painting sessions, I realized that she didn't have anything to wipe down and things can get quite messy. So I've installed a 3M hook and hung up a waterproof apron and arm cover for her to wear as well as something to wipe with. Moving to the hallway here, I framed these posters on the wall. Alina really enjoys having them at her eye level and I think they are not only beautiful to look at but also great for her learning. We have posters for each season, fall and winter are here and I've recently swapped them with spring and summer ones. We have one focused on animals and another one featuring fruits. Now right next to the frames we've got a house shaped whiteboard. Working on vertical surfaces like this isn't just fun, it also promotes physical dexterity and control while significantly enhancing shoulder and elbow stability. 
I truly believe that having something like a whiteboard, blackboard, or an easel for children can be incredibly beneficial for their development. This whiteboard is quite large, but I intentionally chose a bigger size because it's meant to be a long-term investment as our children grow. It can accommodate various magnetic toys, including magnet tiles, magnet puzzles, and magnetic objects such as fruits, badges, numbers, alphabets, and hangul, which means Korean. I've installed this IKEA planter on the wall at Alina's level to make it easily accessible for her. It's perfect for holding whiteboard markers and magnetic toys. It's securely mounted, making it an ideal addition, especially in an environment where children are constantly on the move. Moving to our outdoor space, I'll briefly show you what our outdoor play area looks like. We've got a tough tray here and I used to set up lots of messy play activities when Alina was younger. I would use rice, beans, pasta, chickpea form, potato starch and so much more to create this beautiful small world right here. It was so much fun. But living in Australia, we have our fair share of wild animals and leaving edible things on the tray attracted some uninvited guests. So I've added this fox grass liner and placed the animal figurines next to it. Now Alina can enjoy small world play whenever she likes without any unexpected visits from possums and birds. If you're interested in more messy play ideas and sensory bin materials on the top tray, I have a dedicated video covering just that so be sure to check it out if you like more inspiration. Otherwise we've got various play-doh tools and play-doh in this box along with some wooden sensory blocks with transparent and colored acrylic inserts making it perfect for outdoor play. We also have bean bags down here and over here we've set up a small trampoline where Alina can engage in plenty of physical activities getting that energy out. Plus, we've created a little corner with herbs and flowers that Alina can personally take care of by watering them. And we have this beautiful coffee house which was a special gift for Alina's second birthday. When we have play dates at home, our mud kitchen is a massive hit with the kids. They enjoy making mud pies, mixing sand and water and other natural loose items that can be found in the garden. They also enjoy playing ice cream truck, running a sandwich cafe or even a coffee place. It can turn into anything their imagination desires and the children absolutely love it. So this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of our play areas at home. Remember, it's all about creating spaces where our children can learn, explore and have fun. If you found this video inspiring, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!